Hi there, Ken from Audio Talk. It's been a while since my last video. I apologize for that, sincerely. But um, I got this idea that um, I should show you uh, my method of uh, replacing a foam edge, or it could be the, it's the same uh, if it's a rubber edge. This, this is a very common situation that this uh, edge here, out here, uh, dissolves. And um, and then it will look like that the woofer is now uh, dead and needs replacement. And for some speakers, of course, that could be a good, uh, an easier thing to do is just to replace the driver. Um, but the cabinet, uh, if you've seen some of the other videos, the box uh, plays a very essential role to the overall performance together with the driver and so there's a lot of differences between these speaker drivers even the, if they look uh, relatively uh, much like the same uh, they really aren't so so a safe way if that we're only talking about that this edge have dissolved is to replace it rather than replacing the driver <clears throat> so, so I did a video then uh, in um, in Danish many many years ago, and so let's go through that and go through the process of um, of, of replacing uh, one of these edges here. And uh, but I want to just talk a little bit about uh, um, some some of the stuff here in general, um, because there's no standard to the size of the speaker driver's chassis. You do hear about like five inches, six inches, eight inches and so forth, which could sound like there was some kind of standard, but there really isn't. The measurements are far more uh, precise and for this to work, you know, like it's supposed to, you really should try and find online the specific edge, foam edge, for your model of speaker driver. So that could be uh, categorized by the overall speaker, like an old JBL L100, you might be able to find a, a repair kit for that specifically. If you can't, uh, then maybe try and pull the driver out. And if it's some kind of brand name of uh, individual speaker driver, like a CS or, um, you know, some some kind of branded speaker driver, you could then find it through that, perhaps. Um, there is also ways of measuring them out, and um, and in places where you can buy them, uh, measured by millimeters, uh, so very precise measurements, which would be another way. But the first one, of course, is the best figure. Somebody has already figured out that this particular model is perfect for it yes okay i think we should jump into it and uh, the first part uh, that i want to show is the cleaning process and so i know this might be distracting and looking <laughs> weird but the old video is then playing in my ears so that i have uh, some cues to uh, um, to, to say what I need to say. It's been a while since I, I actually fixed some of these drivers myself. Been too too busy for many years now uh, to, to do it. So, um, but the process is quite good. And um, as you can see here, um, I am picking off uh, the old pieces and, um, and actually, uh, let's see. And actually, using something like a chisel and scraping off um, is a really good idea. Um, and of course, to be careful, uh, I used to also put my finger behind the actual cone on the back side, you see there, so I can really scrape. Uh, but of course, that has some danger of uh, poking yourself with that chisel. You see, yeah. it says alcohol, uh, yeah, it's to not to use alcohol when you have a, um, a paper cone. So any kind of paper cone, 
I really re recommend not to use anything uh, to dissolve uh, because it can easily uh, ruin the membrane. And uh, but of course the chassis, uh, the actual chassis, the metal part, you could clean that up with some isopropyl alcohol. But the best is just to use, um, just to rub it off and use uh, a knife or something, and you just carefully scrape everything off. Also to not, you know, uh, use dissolvents uh, or solvents too much, uh, like alcohol. Because you know it's not good for your for your brain um, to get that whatever whatever's left of mine. I like to to keep it so I don't use it. Yes, and that's that's pretty much it for for the for the cleaning part. So let's just skip to the the next uh, part. Well, let's jump into the mounting part of it which is the, you know, clearly the most uh, difficult part. And, um, oh yeah, and then for alcohol, of course, I mean, if you have some kind of a um, polyester cone, like a plastic cone, uh, polypropylene, uh, you can use alcohol on that. Um, and perhaps Kevlar, ca carbon fiber, that sort of thing. A lot of uh, out, what's out there is paper cones, and so, yeah, just scrape that uh, and, and and not use any kind of uh, alcohol for that. Let's get to the mounting part. So in, um, the process I use takes more effort, but it's more sure to have a good result. The reasoning is for the centering of the driver, like how clearly, how precisely it kind of gets to be in the middle. If it's off a little bit to the one side, it can get like funny, um, uh, what's it called, uh, sounds as far as uh, humming, uh, not scraping noises. That's of course it will have if it's really close, if it's all the way up against. So I actually remove the center dome and I use little um, pieces of plastic to like kind of uh, put it in the middle and also gives me the opportunity to lift it up a little bit, lift the cone up a little bit. So. So you, the reason why I'm measuring first was to order a, a, a new dust cap here, and then I cut the old one free. When you order the new one, then either order one of same size or a little bit bigger, so that you can hide your uh, if it if it doesn't get perfectly cut. And so. What I use is uh, what's called a clear plastic document folder. And then I cut these little pieces off and I stick them down into the gap here. You can see in the video, game, my hands are in the way, but there you can see it. I stick them down until they like firmly down there, you know, enough of them. And then I can lift the whole thing, this whole arrangement up. So it's clear of the chassis. And I can get to to really work on gluing the thing on, because I want to glue on the inside first and have that hardening uh, cure, have that curing, and then after a couple of hours of of that have uh, been cured, I will do the outside. So here we're assessing how far in on the cone the glue should be, um, uh, what's it called, put on. Because we want to put on some glue on the cone first and that, that like kind of go into the driver, like have it sucking into the driver. And we also want to put on some glue on the edge itself. We give it about a minute uh, to um, for the glue to like get in there. So have a, have a rag ready, um, wet rag. If it's a paper cone though, I would recommend dry and glue, by the way, I forgot to bring that up. Um, I would recommend something like Elmer's uh, glue, like a, so some kind of white glue that then turns clear in the end, uh, so, so it will be pretty. Uh, but it, it's nice to have it, uh, that it's possible to see what you're doing 
and also you want it to be slowly curing so you have some time to kind of reset the whole thing if, uh, if you don't get it set down precisely. So here, this is a casco glue. I don't know if it's available in, in America, but it's something we're using over there uh, that works extremely well for this. Uh, but, you know, the Elmer's, I'm sure, is perfectly fine uh, for this. It's some kind of, like, standard glue. And so I put down a bead like that, and then I'm going to smear it on. And that's why we were, like, putting down the foamage in the beginning just to see how far in are we going to need to apply this so that it, we won't be like so it won't be ugly you know in the end and be with a lot of glue with, with you know right around the edge there so yes now we're on to the edge itself where we're gonna put down a bead uh, like that on the inside and um, and again we, you want to leave this for like 40 seconds or so, minute, and let it get in there. And, um, and see, we're only doing the inside, because we actually want to cure that this, this part here as much as we can. And so you just keep on like giving them a little, a little dab down there all the way around. And I will even say, I'm going to think, I'm going to show that in the video. Yeah, I'll turn around the driver and look on the inside also and see if it looks like you got it perfectly all the way around. Kind of look at the 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 roll of it all, you know, this part here, and see if it fits perfectly all the way around. It looks you're going to be having a straight stroke, you know, it's like straight back and forth. So. And see, that's where the advantage really is of using those um, those those pieces of plastic down, is that you're able to pull this whole arrangement up. Yes. So I usually, you know, wait until the next day to take the next uh, part, which will be to glue the outside down. And so that's what I'm doing there. Plus, I'm like smoothing it out with my fingers leave it up for about a minute before yeah see so it's, so really that's an advantage of um, being able to work on it there and and smoothening it out one more time here and once you have that totally smoothened out and been sitting there for about a minute to like pull into the material, then you you could move down your cone into place, and still with these plastic pieces in there, so that you keep a really nice even distance down in the magnetic um, down in the in the gap in the in your magnet, and that's what it is a motor system gets to sit down there precisely and then you find that a good distance uh, where you could see it would be in, a, in its resting point and you dab down the the outside like that and these are and then you I recommend uh, getting these spring clamps uh, like I show in this video and um, and mount them and you can leave the clamps on actually during the dry time and then take those off. Um, I will say that I have experienced if the foam is a bit soft uh, that they might leave a permanent uh, mark there. So perhaps like maybe an hour or so and then remove the clamps and then wait at least five or six hours until you use the speaker driver. And now you can remove the, the little um, plastic pieces. And what's left is just to mount the uh, dust cap. And uh, it's not that, you know, you don't have to be super precise with that one. It's more a question of aesthetics. 
and then you put on a bead of glue on that smoothen that out nicely and then you put that down on the um, and you put that down on the uh, cone just like yeah and that's it all right here's Ken from audio talk I hope you got something out of it and have fun with your projects take care bye